Church, Palapinta County Cowboy Church, where people greet you with a smile and a shame. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, what a place. Hi, Adam and Elizabeth here. Thank you for participating with us online here at Palapinta County Cowboy Church. If you have received a blessing from this ministry today, please consider partnering in ministry with us and spreading God's word. You can do this by going to palapinacowboychurch.com, scrolling to the left side of the homepage, and clicking on the link, click here to give. Thank you for partnering with us, and enjoy today's message. James, if you would, flip your hand out over and join us in uh, some singing this morning.
treat this morning, we have Miss Pat Clary is going to sing a little bit of If That Isn't Love. good i tell you what we got a joy and a treat today y'all welcome our kids corral group they're going to come and do a little bit of singing and talking for you y'all welcome them if you would please this morning
Well, this is a big group, isn't it? Don't you like that? I don't know about you guys, but it's always Christmas when we see the kids here. Amen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to thank all these volunteers. Ray, I thank you very much. I'll tell you what, uh, her and Natalie have been running our kids group back there, and they just do an awesome job. And I tell you, I'm so, so thankful for both of them. Sorry, uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, it's just the sheep. Well, the worst part is the smell. Other than that, and they're easily stressed, and we live with them 24/7. Now, now, don't complain. Uh, the sheep need us and we need them. Besides, it's the only life we know. So you mean we're stuck out here with a bunch of stinky sheep? <laughs> well, every job has its downside, but I can't think of everything else I'd rather be doing right now. Then you haven't thought long enough. Talk to a shepherd. Well, duh. And how many <coughs> Okay, you guys, knock it off. There's no use in complaining. It is what it is. And what it is is the bottom of the heap. Nobody really likes shepherds. It's unfortunate that a few bad apples have made us all black sheep. <laughs> well, it would be nice if we weren't always treated as outcasts. You'd think someone would at least say something. The herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the sky. Religion and hosts proclaim, 
we heard an angel speak. He spoke to us, to shepherds. Nobody speaks to shepherds. Who's God thing? And he used an angel to do it. I'm terrified. I've never seen anything like it. What great news this is. A Savior born for us today. Right here in Bethlehem. He gives the signs that we would know which Savior to look for. But if a whole army of angels announced his birth, why would our Savior be born in a manger? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go find out. Yeah, we don't want to miss this. Oh. Excuse me, may we come, uh, excuse me, we've come to see the baby. May we come in? I suppose so, but how didn't you know we were here? An angel appeared to us in the field, so it told us where to find you. Oh. Of course, that makes sense. And angel appeared to me and to Mary and to Zachary, Zachariah, and now to a bunch of sheep, shepherds, of shepherds. Yes, isn't he beautiful? Well, yes, but I didn't expect him to look so human. <laughs> okay, now it's your turn. The prophet Isaiah said that he would be called, called Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Which means God with us. So this little baby's God? He is God in human flesh. He's just like you and me. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, yeah, oh, it's remarkable. Oh, yes, 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 it is. it is. Does he have a name? He, <laughs> his name is Jesus, which means the Lord saved, saved the because because he will save his people from their sins. Thank you for coming. Come on, you guys. Let's go. We have good news to share. Jesus Christ is born. born. Joy to the world, the world has come. When the country is dying, and every dawn, and every dawn, and the nature sings. Unheavenly 
nature sing in heaven, heaven, in nature sing. I think you'll know this one. I don't think you'll have to practice it, okay? And I'm gonna ask all these guys out here to help us too, all right? Here we go. You know that's your appreciate that. Y'all did such a good job. Y'all give them another hand, would you? I forgot to tell them they were going to do that. No. I, for, I forgot to tell them they were going to get the singer root off the red nose rain did they? Say. Excellent job, guys. Excellent job. I tell you, I just I love it. Makes Christmas to me. Y'all, you're glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. All right, if you're visiting with us today, let me just tell you, you, no other place will you probably ever find that you'll go into church and sing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Amen? We are not normal here. But we're proud of not being normal. Amen? Every year, when I was a kid, every year, I can, as long as I can remember growing up, the one thing I always looked forward to was watching Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And uh, I don't know if it was the deer or if it was just the story. I got a feeling uh, later on in life it was probably the deer, right? Yeah. Yeah, R Rudolph doesn't fly over this part of Texas anymore. He gets shot at. But uh, <laughs> especially this time of year, right? I guarantee you. But I do remember that. It was a classic tale of a deer with a red nose who just didn't fit in anywhere. And uh, I, the more I watched that story, again, I, as growing up, I thought, man, that's just such a great Christmas story. But I didn't realize when I was watching it just how true it would be as I got older in my life. And uh, as we came together as a cowboy church, I got to thinking, man, this just really, really fit. And it fit because it wasn't Rudolph that I made the connection with. It was the misfit toys, the misfits, the misfits in life. It's the misfits that I connected to in Christmas land. And I want you to take a look at what I'm talking about right here. Oh, is this your snowbank? No. Who are you? Well, actually, I am a dentist. A dentist? Well, I want to be someday. Right now, I'm just an elf. But I don't need anybody. I'm... I'm independent. Yeah? Me too. I'm... whatever you said. Independent. 
Hey, what do you say we both be independent together, huh? You wouldn't mind my red nose? Not if you don't mind me being a dentist. It's a deal. We're a couple of misfits. We're a couple of misfits. What's the matter with misfits? That's where we fit in. Different from the rest. Who decides the test? The one is really best. We're a couple of misfits. We're a couple of misfits. What's the matter with misfits? That's where we fit in. Why am I such a misfit? I am not just a nitwit. They can't fire me. I quit. Seems I don't fit in. Who decides the best? The one is really best. We're a couple of misfits. We're a couple of misfits. What's the matter with misfits? That's where we fit in. Oh, is this your snowbank? No. Yeah, I like that. You like that? You, does it feel like Christmas to you? How many of you remember that? Okay, now I'm going to ask you a truthful question. you got to admit it. How many of you watched Rudolph when you were kids? Maybe you still watch it. Okay, how many of you still watch it? There you go. Now you're being, that's the honest ones right there. Yeah, I tell you what. Uh, if you are visiting with us today, you're probably saying, mm, well, um, what did I get into? If I hurry, I can make it out the door, and nobody will know that I'm gone, right? But I'll tell you what, you have walked into what I believe is the land of the misfit. Right here, right here. And I understand it's not normal to watch a children's classic in church but I got to tell you again, there's something about this and there's something about this story that just fits every one of us. And I think it fits Christmas uh, to a T. And I just want to share you with that uh, with you today. Uh, again, let me just re quickly tell you that if you are here and you're here for the very first time, you are not in your grandmother's church. All right, I like saying that because I like to warn you ahead of time that this is like no other church you have ever been to in your entire life. And we're proud of it. Amen? Here we are. We sure are. Now, there's some characters in the land of the misfit toys that I think that just really fit a lot of us here in Cowboy Church. And the reason I want to talk about this today, because I want you to, I know that some of you are looking for a church home. And uh, some of you have thought about coming to Cowboy Church, and some of you have thought, well, I don't know if this is the right place for me or not, because I don't know if I fit in. And so I just want to talk to you about some of the characters from Misfit Island, and I'm going to ask you this morning to put yourself in place of one of these characters today, all right? Because I think we all fit here. How about this guy right here? This is the cowboy with the ostrich. Now, we don't see the ostrich here, but uh, he wound up on the land of misfit toys because he didn't ride a horse. He rode an ostrich. Now, that's a misfit, amen? But I'm going to tell you something I think. I think that anybody that is a cowboy, a cowboy at heart or a cowboy by trade, can be classified as a misfit. I thought I'd get an amen from the front row for sure here. But, yeah. Yeah, I, I think they are, uh, uh, let alone one who rides an ostrich. But i got to tell you, we've got some guys, and in fact, some of these guys are down here on the front row now, that would be crazy enough to ride an ostrich, all right? I, I mean, I, I believe that they would. But um, certainly an, an ostrich riding cowboy fits in as a misfit. And one of my favorite Willie Nelson songs has to be this, My Heroes Have Always Been Cowboys. Yeah. And they have been, that in, in my office, the, the, the picture is, if you become a member of this church, you have your picture taken, and it's right in front of that sign, because I believe that that signifies who and what we are when we come together in a place like this. Amen? And, and I tell you what, God loves a cowboy. Even though a cowboy is probably a misfit, probably been a misfit for uh, years and years and years, may have always been one, but I believe that God loves a misfit. Amen? Yeah, I, I do. Sure do. No matter what Western movie you watch, or even if your life resembles a man or a woman who enjoy the freedom of the great outdoors, which I think is a lot of us in here today, to many a person in this country, that kind of lifestyle might be considered a misfit kind of lifestyle today. 
Uh, why? Because here at Cowboy Church, we embrace that culture, and it's the last of a dying breed, isn't it? Okay. This, you're supposed to participate today, all right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the last of a dying breed, but it is a, a breed of person who still respects the flag. It's the last of a dying breed that appreciates the ground that God has given them to work and tend to the creatures of this earth that God has asked them to tend to. They enjoy waking up to a good cup of coffee and the smell of a bale of alfalfa hay. Amen? Family is still everything to this person, and God comes first, even though they don't always make it through the doors of the church. They are one of a kind, but in this country they can be classified as a myth. How about this guy right here? This is Charlie in the Box. Y'all remember Charlie in the Box? It's not Jack. Remember, uh, he got put on the uh, land of misfit toys because his name wasn't Jack in the bo Box. It was Charlie in the Box. But I think he looks a lot like people that might come to Cowboy Church because I think you might know this man or woman. On the outside, they appear normal, uh, but after close inspection, they're just as much as, of a misfit as the rest of us. Most of these folks are folks that for some reason or another have boxed themselves in. They have talents, they have abilities that God can certainly use. But because of their shyness or maybe because of their introvert, introvert personalities, maybe they were never given a chance to show what they could truly do and I believe there's a lot of people in cowboy church that fit that mold they came in and they said you know what I'm just too shy I'm just too introverted in my personality to really get involved or to really to, to jump in the middle of things and so most of the time they come but you really don't know what they're capable of doing because they've never stepped out of the box to do it maybe you're like this guy right here a spotted elephant this person attends Cowboy Church as well. They are the person that has tried every single church in the county. And they've never found any place they ever felt like they fit in. They felt like a spotted elephant every time they walked through the doors of a church. They were expected to look like everybody else, talk like everybody else, do everything like everybody else. But as they got into the church, they realized, you know what, I am nothing like the people that I'm sitting around. I feel about as out of place as a spotted elephant. Maybe you're like this guy right here. This is my favorite. Or this next one. There we go. Bumble. Y'all remember this guy? Yeah. I can identify with this guy the best. I think this is the reason why I became a cowboy preacher right here. This guy fits in the cowboy church like no other person. And the reason why he does is because we, many of us men can relate to him. We're big and we love facial hair. <laughs> Amen? We're just plain rednecks. There is no other place for us to go because we like that facial hair and we like to be in redneck and we, that's just our lifestyle. But we just don't fit in any place else, but we sure fit in at Cowboy Church. How about this guy right here? You saw him a while ago. This is Hermie. Hermie the elf. He wants to be a dentist. He doesn't want to be an elf. He doesn't want to make toys. He wants to do something completely different. And I think this is where many folks who come to Cowboy Church fit into the land of misfits is with this guy right here. These folks in Cowboy Church are the ones who certainly look like they would fit in any place. In other words, they fit in here, they fit in other, other denominations, other churches across this county, or maybe a different county. They look like they would fit in any place. They've even fit in in some places before they actually got to Cowboy Church. But what they were practicing, they found absolutely no joy in. They found no joy in it. They were practicing religion, but they weren't practicing a relationship. They were playing the part, but it was fake. 
They may have finally realized that to be what God wanted them to be, they were going to have to quit being fake about what they believed, what they stood for, the way they acted, the way they talked, the way they studied the Word. They, they thought, well, you know what? I've been fake all this time. I've been just practicing my religion. I've been just checking it off the list. But you know what? I'm just a big fake. I really don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They stopped doing when they got here what they thought they were supposed to do and started doing what they were called to do. And they got among folks who are real with their faith and they don't care if the world sees them as a bit different and they became what God called them to be. You see, I think that's people that come to Cowboy Church. I think they practiced a lot of stuff, but they've never practiced what God wanted them to be in church or in their life. Maybe you're like this guy right here, Rudolph. Main character of our story today, right? There we go. Rudolph is the biggest misfit there is on Misfit Island. Why? Because even his parents tried to hide him. Remember that? They said, you know what? We, uh, this, this guy, this kid's not going to work right here because he's just way different. We got to figure out something to do with him. And so they kind of banished him to some degree. And he wound up on Misfit Island. And as he left home, he was in search of a place where he would not stand out as much as he did when he was with Santa Claus. So on Misfit Island, he meets other misfits. He gets around other misfits, and they introduce themselves like we saw here on, on the clip just a little bit ago. And they introduce themselves to Rudolph, and they say, Rudolph, you know what? Uh, we'd like to be friends with you. We'd like for you to be a part of this. And Rudolph says, well, wait a minute. Do you not mind that I'm a little bit different? Do you not mind that my nose shines? I, I, I'm, I'm not the same as other deer, reindeer. And they all say, you know what? We don't mind. We're all different, too. So Rudolph finds a place that he can be normal in an abnormal world. You ever notice that God has a real way of using a misfit? He does. It's people in God's Word that just don't fit the mold. Let me give you some examples. Abraham, the father of all nations, the guy was old. Jacob was insecure. Joseph was abused. Moses stuttered. Gideon was poor. Samson was codependent. Rahab was immoral. David had an affair and all kinds of family problems. Elijah was suicidal. Jeremiah was depressed. Jonah was reluctant. Naomi was a widow. John the Baptist, well, <laughs> he kind of speaks for himself. I'm going to talk more about him here in a minute. Peter was impulsive and hot-tempered. Good night, that doesn't fit anybody in here, does it? Martha worried a lot. <laughs> that doesn't fit anybody either, does it? The Samaritan woman had several failed marriages. Zacchaeus was unpopular. Thomas had doubts. Paul had poor health, and he was a murderer. And Timothy was timid. If you think God can't use a misfit, look at this list. Look at this list. You know, and there's not a one of these folks that I just mentioned that are right in the Word of God that didn't belong on the island of misfits. Every single one of them could be there. Now, to say that Jesus was a misfit wouldn't totally be out of the question either. Y'all hang on before your dander goes up in the back and the hair goes up on the back of your neck. Hang on a second. Even though we know him to be the very Son of God, I think he fits in to the island of misfits. So I'm going to have you stand with me for a moment, if you will. We're going to read Matthew chapter 1. And gentlemen, I'm going to ask if you'll remove your cover for me, if you would, today. Matthew chapter 1, we're going to start with verse 18. As we read God's Word today, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she, found, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, 
Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name. All right, now I tell you what, that name's above every name. I think we need to shout it out. You're to give him the name of what? Jesus. That's right, because that name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is the King of kings, he is the Lord of lords. It is the name of Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means... Do you feel like God's with you today? Amen. God with us forever. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your word. Father, it is a story that we have read many Christmas seasons. Many of us have. Father, maybe today there's somebody who's just hearing it for the first time. And Father, maybe they're just now realizing that even with a misfit, you're still with us. Father, it is the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that today, Father, we would understand and the gravity of what you did when you came to this earth. As you sent your son to be the perfect sacrifice for every single misfit in this room today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. Like I said, the story is just surrounded by misfits all over the place. All over the place. When you consider the abnormal method of, con of conception with Mary, followed by potential dangers of being pr pregnant out of wedlock, followed by the implication of a possible divorce, some might classify this story as totally dysfunctional. It sounds like a dysfunctional family to me, doesn't it, to you? To top it off, this baby who could have been born anywhere because it was God's son, it could have been born in the lap of luxury, it could have been born with trumpets sounding, it could have been with, born with tons of angels surrounding it, it could have been born in no other way chose to be born in a stable. Instead of royalty paying the first visit to this baby, shepherds paid that visit. Now, if you know anything about shepherds at all, you know that they were the lowest class of individual there was back in that day. They were not allowed to enter the temple. They handled dead animals, and so therefore they were un considered unclean. And yet in the middle of this uh, great and powerful story of Jesus' birth, the first people that were told were shepherds. The misfit of all misfits were shepherds. And we see as, even, as Jesus grew to be a man that the folks that Jesus hung out with, he didn't hang out with the class of the class all the time. We know that, that Jesus hung out with tax collectors, Women with questionable reputations, fishermen, murderers, and even adulterers. Certainly not something you would see or would expect to see a king of kings hang out with. Yet, God in the form of man in the form of Jesus could relate to the biggest misfit in that time. By the way, he still relates to us, doesn't he? Amen. Even Jesus' family tree could be called into question as far as the island of misfits. As I mentioned a while ago, John the Baptist. Now, I'll tell you what, how would you like to have that guy in your family tree? You know, you and I, all of us, I, I think even in this Christmas time, we always seem to, to recognize this probably more than any other time. All of us have somebody in our family that probably resembles John the Baptist, Right? It's that person that comes only on Christmas time or maybe Thanksgiving, and it's that family member you look at and go, whoa, boy. They just got off the wagon way too quick over here. You know what I mean? John the Baptist was, the, was a, most likely a cousin of Jesus, born to parents that were way out of the prime of having a child. His parents were really old. Old John the Baptist was an odd duck. Hard to say he would fit into a normal category at all. The dude dressed in camel hair and had a leather belt. Now, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with a leather belt. 
Right, guys? But he ate locusts and he ate honey. That was his diet. There's something wrong with that. I don't care how much honey you put on a locust, I ain't eating it. You know what I mean? He stood in direct opposition to wealthy Jews. Outside of his sermons and baptisms, John was somewhat of a recluse. He didn't like company a lot. He kind of stayed to himself. But I tell you what, when he preached, he preached the coming of somebody much greater than him. John said, you know, I'm here to prepare the way. I'm not him. I'm not God. I'm not the Savior, the Messiah, or anything. I'm here to preach the coming of the one that is. He was happy being the preparer. He required no special attention or no special accolades. To the Jews, this guy was certainly a misfit. As a matter of fact, he was such a misfit, they wanted him gone. Mary, the mother of Jesus, very young, probably somewhere around 13 to 14 years of age when the angel came and visited her. Betrothed to be married, but conceived his son by the Holy Spirit prior to that marriage taking place. She was a devoted to God woman. She came from a poor family, an insignificant town. Little expectation of Mary's life was probably expected. As a matter of fact, if we hadn't uh, had the story of Mary and her conception by the Holy Spirit, we might not even know who Mary is. Because she, there wasn't much expected out of Mary at that time. She was full of courage and full of commitment. But certainly somebody that the Jews would have recognized as a misfit. Joseph. Jesus' earthly father was a simple carpenter. Joseph was a direct descendant of David, a gracious man who kept the laws, a man of meager means. He was not a rich man. He was honorable and faithful. And the one thing we do know about Joseph is that Joseph's life apparently was not very long because when we get into the part where Jesus was crucified, we see no mention of Joseph. Most theologians believe that Joseph probably passed away somewhere in 12, 13 years old in Jesus' life. In the movie Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Santa, after discovering the usefulness of the toys to the eyes of a couple of misfits like Rudolph and Hermie, makes a statement. And I want you to listen to this statement. He said, maybe misfits have a place too. Maybe misfits have a place to. So I thought, why don't we test this? Let's test this. John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus, and then John baptized Jesus. That's not bad for a misfit. How about Mary and Joseph, or, uh, Jesus' earthly mother and father? They were the father of the king of kings and the lord of lords. That's not bad for a couple of misfits. How about Jesus himself? Savior of the world, King of kings, Son of God. An entire book was written about him and his father that we still read 2,000 years later. He defeated death. He defeated hell. He sits at the right hand of God and will crush Satan in the end times. That's not bad for a misfit. There's something that's never taken into consideration when somebody judges a misfit. Mary quoted in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, and I'm going to ask you if you remember this. I'm not going to have you look it up unless they've got it up here. But Mary quoted this. She said, for with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing's impossible. You know, there's a lot of things in my life that I just thought were impossible. Maybe, maybe you thought they were just impossible. And I thought because I was a misfit, I, I was the poster child for being a misfit. And I thought there is surely no way that God can use a misfit like me. But like Mary said, there, nothing's impossible with God because he's in the business of using misfits. You know what this verse doesn't say? It doesn't say for the rich, all things are possible. 
It does not say for the talented, all things are possible. It does not say for those who fit the qualifications, all things are possible. It does not say for the folks who dress up that all things are possible. It does not say for the ones who don't experience trials in their life, all things are possible. It says no matter who you are and what you are, as big of misfit as you are, all things are possible through God. All things are possible. There's another quote from the movie that I want to talk about for just a second that I think applies to misfits, and it's one of the last ones that were made, that was made in the movie. It says, toys are never really happy until they're loved by a child. Misfits, I think we could put this like this, and we wouldn't be taking it out of context. But I think it says to me, misfits are never really happy until they're loved by a child. John 3, 17 says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but through Him the world might be saved. You feel like you're condemned as a misfit? You feel like you're just in a position in your life where you say, you know what, I haven't really been good for anything, and you know, certainly to be in, in God's kingdom or certainly to be doing anything for God. I just feel like a total misfit. The Word of God says that He sent His Son into this world so that through His Son, you and I, including the misfits of the world, might be saved. He loved us all, all of us. Humbly, Jesus came into the world in a manner that even a misfit like me, maybe a misfit like you, would recognize. It was something we could relate to. We, God's children, are never really happy until we're loved by a child, and that child is Jesus. And maybe that's something you've been missing in your life. Maybe you felt like, you know what, I just never felt like I was really loved. But I want you to know something this Christmas. That this child named Jesus came into this world just for you. Just for you. You know something, I believe it's okay to be a misfit. Romans 12, 2 tells us, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve God's perfect will, His good and pleasing and perfect will. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. You know, I tell you what, I think it's pretty safe to say that anybody that comes to Cowboy Church is probably not a conformist. I think I can say that with all assurance. You can look around you right now, and I promise you, anybody that's sitting right next to you, minus the visitors, of course. I want to make sure I say that, okay? Yeah, I got to be. But I guarantee you that none of us would say, hey, we are, we are conformed to the pattern of this world. We are oddballs. We're odd ducks. We fit into a place that's like a, a, a round piece in a square hole. But I tell you what, we figured out here at Cowboy Church, that God loves us just like we are. So my question as we close up today, and I'm not going to keep you very long. Do you feel like a misfit? Do you feel like there's just a place that you don't belong? Do you feel like there just hasn't been any place maybe you truly fit in I want to tell you something. And here, here's what I want you to get this morning if you don't get anything else. You are in the right spot. Because you belong here. You belong right here in the land of misfits. And I tell you what, God is doing an amazing work through every misfit sitting in every chair in this building. God loves a misfit, and he sent his son for you. And by the way, again, you're in the middle of Misfit Island. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. With God, anything is possible. Anything's possible. The last quote Rudolph on Misfit Island says, So why don't we just be independent together? I love that quote. Because you see, I tell you what, God put you here for a reason. God sent you here today for a reason. God's got you filling a seat in this place today for a reason. 
because he said, you know what, you might have been independent in the past. You may have felt independent in the past. You may have felt so independent that you felt like a misfit, but God has a place for every single misfit, and it's right in the middle of Cowboy Church. And this morning, we want to invite you to be a part. Now, I believe that, again, Jesus Christ came to this earth for you. And to be a part of that family, you need to accept him as a personal Lord and Savior. He did the work. He paid the price. He paid the sacrifice. And he said, you know what? I love you even if you are a misfit. And today he wants that relationship with you. Not just head knowledge, but heart knowledge. So I'm going to give you an opportunity today to invite him into your heart. And then the second thing I want you to think about today is this. We are a Bible-believing, God-fearing group of people. We believe that we are misfits, but we're okay with that. We believe that we are here in Palapena County to reach every misfit in Palapena County. And if you feel like you fit that qualification, we'd like for you to come join us and make this your church home. We're going to take you, and we're going to take you just the way you are, and we're going to love you just the way you are. Come be a part of it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, today we just humbly thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to understand that you gave your life on Calvary for misfits just like us. Father, today, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for loving us unconditionally. We want to thank you for loving us even with all the baggage and the garbage that we seem to come with. And Father, today in this quiet place, Father, I pray that if there's somebody here this morning that does not know you as a personal Lord and Savior, that they will not leave this building until they've accepted you as their Savior and Lord. Oh, Father, what a privilege it is to be loved by a child. Your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth, Father, as a little bitty baby, God in the form of man. And Father, today we humbly come into the presence of a king, just like those shepherds did on that special evening. Father, we just stand in awe of you. We stand amazed by what you are capable of doing. And Father, we understand today, Father, that exactly what Mary said is even true today, that with you all things are possible. So Father, we just submit our lives to you. Work in us. Live in us. We submit our hearts. Father, we ask that you come in and take control of everything that we are. We believe that you died on the cross for our sin. Father, we believe that you rose on the third day. We believe that you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And that you are at the right hand of the Father. Father, thank you for loving us unconditionally. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ today, then here's something I would like for you to do. I'd like for you to let me know that by finding what we call a green card back here. This green card lets us know that you've invited Jesus Christ.